Our lesson today is entitled, John the Baptist Appears, and it and is found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 3, verses 2b through 6, and verses 15 through 18. This is Sunday School Lesson for December the 18th, 2022. My name is Tony Miller, and the key verse is found in the third verse of the text, and it reads as follows, And he went into the region around the Jordan, proclaiming, the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Again, John the Baptist appears. So the aim of this lesson uh, is what is the bond uh, that, uh, what is the bold message that John preached? And what is John's response to the people who suspected that he might be the Messiah? And what did John the Baptist symbolize? This is my YouTube channel. I ask you would please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons, share my lessons, leave me comments, all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. Well, each week I do prepare some extra background that we've been here for a while here in Luke, but I, I give you some background that'll lead us up uh, to this lesson. Hope it has give you some value. Let's move on, amen. So the timeline I've used along our journey here in Luke that, you know, we've gone here from that call of Abraham, this God's chosen people who would leave Egypt and go into an exodus and they would go into the wilderness because of their sin and ultimately into a promised land and, 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 and through a period of, of judges and a period of kings and, and ultimately because of their sin that they would get scattered at the hands of the uh, Assyrians and again scattered at the hands of Babylonians. Uh, God's Shekinah glory would leave before the, the scattering at the hand of, of the Babylonians, that, that Shekinah glory that was there with them from the time they left the Exodus. And then they would go to this post-exile period where, where, where again, the history, the, lineage, the line of what happened to God's people. And you'll go to this period of Ezra and Nehemiah where they would try to restart this, uh, this, this uh, community of God's chosen people. And then you would end the Old Testament with Malachi, and you would go into 400 years of silence till the Christ child would be born, that, that promised Messiah, that promised Redeemer. Amen. And I've shared with you this timeline as well that provides you with the history of uh, God's people from Abraham all the way to now where we are right before Christ was born. Christ will be, Christ be born about 4 BC, and you'd have all these events that will lead us up to this event after this whole 400 years where God would stop dealing with his folks because he was pretty much tired with all of the sin that they would continually perpetrate against him and his word and that which he requires of them. Amen. And I share with you that there would be at, the, at this end of Malachi that God would have this whole... Uh, uh, prophecy that he would says that this this Messiah would come. The Messiah would come through the lineage of uh, of, of of David, and and he would be from this lineage from uh, Joseph and Mary from both sides, and it would be preceded by this forerunner John, who's the subject of our lesson, this virgin birth, born in Bethlehem of Judea, that this one Messiah, the one that the forerunner would foretell would come 486 years after the temple is destroyed, and and that's where everybody was looking for that, looking for that Messiah, that prophesied one, that this forward runner, John the Baptist, would tell folks is now on the scene. Amen. That from Malachi to Jesus, the Jewish temple was rebuilt, and the Jewish life and tradition were restored, I share with you, with, with, uh, with um, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. And Aaron's lineage was continued. That would be under Zerubbabel, and the first covenant would be in him. That's the Old Testament. And Malachi will foretell about that, foretell that, that forerunner in Malachi 4. Again, I show you that 400 years of silence, and the forerunner will be born. Then we share with you the last few weeks as well, and this 400 years would end uh, when he went into Babylon, and then the Medo Persian, and the, and the Medes, and the Persian, and the Syrians, and the Roman. Empire, which is now in power where we are today. And let's go on to Malachi 3. Again, this is background leading us up to where we've gotten to this point. Amen. In Malachi 3, it says, Behold, I'm going to send my messenger. Again, God speaking through the prophet Malachi that says, And he will clear the way before me. 
the Lord whom you seek, that Redeemer, that prophesied Messiah, Messiah will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. That is a prophesying of the Messiah that would ultimately come. And that messenger, John the Baptist, would speak of this one who is prophesied throughout the Old Testament prophets would all foretell of his coming. Amen. And during that 400 years of silence, under under Rome's rule now, right? And there's this, they're coming to this period of the Maccabees, and the Maccabees, they make a deal with, uh, uh, with the occupiers, who is Rome, and, and Rome began appointing their high priest that they wanted, not one that came through that lineage of Aaron. They were all supposed to come through the lineage of Aaron, but that's not what happened. That the high priest was selected from that ironic line, and then there would be the one, as that's what... what uh, what Zacharias would do at this moment, but John the Baptist's parents were descendants of that ironic, ironic line, not Annas and, and Caiaphas, who were the high priests at this time, at this moment. Again, the background leading us up to where we are today along our journey. And this forerunner, that one, that John the Baptist is, is someone who comes before another in a sign telling some things that are going to happen. And that's what John would do, that he would be that forerunner telling us of this Messiah, this prophesied one who is to come. John the Baptist. The little we know, we both know about the early years of John, of the son of Zacharias and Elizabeth. The, the, the prophets declare that John would perceive this Messiah and that his purpose would be the call the Jews to repentance and prepare them to receive this Messiah. And he was a prophet held in high regard who led a revival. He was a revivalist. He led a revival in Judea to prepare the people to receive Jesus' message. This gospel of Luke records that John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. John was a holy and righteous man who was wrongly executed. That you, If you continue to read the story, you will hear about that. And his life was characterized by self-denial. He'd be in the wilderness, again, uh, and, and not uh, under, under uh, just obscurity, right? Humility and holy courage. And his humility, he declined the honors of, of, of a admiring crowd to confer this power and authority and, 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 and accolades upon him. No, it's just, I'm just one. Merely a voice calling people to repentance because the kingdom of God is near. That is the message of this forerunner of Jesus. Amen. This John the Baptist, he was uh, his, uh, Zachariah, the high priest, and, 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 and uh, who was the husband of Elizabeth. They both were old and they, were, uh, they couldn't have any children, but this was a miraculous birth proving that God was in control of the affairs of humanity. He made it happen for these folks. And John the Baptist, the forerunner, is a result of this relationship. Amen. I share with you again in a, in a prior lesson that Zechariah would hear from God. That Zechariah, the high priest, was doing his duties in the temple and, and, and an angel, the Lord Gabriel, will come and appear to him right next to the altar while he was preparing the altar of incense for the people. The altar of incense, sending the incense up to Almighty God for the prayers of the people. Amen. And Zacharias, he was troubled when he, when he saw this angel and he was gripped with fear and he says, to, and the angel says, don't be afraid for your petition, your desire to have a child was heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear a child and, and you, will give this man this name, John, and you will have joy and gladness and men will rejoice at his birth. This is what leads us up to our lesson today. Amen. Zacharias, that, that he hears in this angel and he says for you that, that this child that you would have be great in the sight of the Lord and he will not drink wine or liquor and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And yet, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to their God. Again, that is this, this prophet of God, this, this one who is the forerunner leading us up to Jesus, the Messiah, the prophesied Redeemer of man. Amen. And Zacharias, the angel said, your son will be great. 
for he will go before the Lord, the Messiah, to prepare his ways, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. That was the purpose for this child to be born, to make the way for the Messiah. Amen. John the Baptist was the last prophet of the Old Testament. That John was an Old Testament prophet whose, whose work reported the New Testament. He was really the last of the Old Testament prophets. Despite all the great deeds of other Old Testament prophets, Jesus declared that not one of them was greater than this cousin. That John, several commentaries claim that Jesus' statement in verse 11 literally means that John was the greatest of all men who had ever lived. Right, because his word and his message was so powerful that he was not merely the greatest prophet, but of, of all men born, but he was the greatest. And 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 when one considers all the people that have, have come before him, was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and and Moses, and 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 David, how great John the Baptist must have been. Yet there's still a little, little known about him in verse nine, where Jesus says, "Little more, he was he was more than a prophet." The Greek uh, literally means much more than a prophet. In the larger context, Jesus is going on to say that the reason for this is that John was himself the fulfillment of the prophecy, that 400 year gap. All were, were waiting and pointing to this one who would come, would be the forerunner, would tell us about the Messiah was gonna come to, to be able to take away the sins of man, to restore the relationship broken with, uh, back at Adam with humanity. And no other prophet has ever been the fulfillment of this distinct prophet. And that, and what an important prophecy it was that Jesus, the Redeemer, the prophesied one, the Messiah, has now come to restore man. Amen. And then I share with you Matthew 11, that again, when Jesus says, I tell you the truth, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist, yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven, he is greater. Uh, is greater than he is. The John is the greatest. Again, let's move on. The John was more than a prophet. Again, amen. I share with you in Matthew 11 that, that from the time that John the Baptist began preaching now, his time is as fast forward that he's born and now he's got into his older age and, and, our, and his middle age is probably in his nearest 30s, right? That's the time when most men would come into their their uh, their space in, in Jewish uh, life. And, for, and from the time that John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people were attacking the kingdom. They, they were attacking it because they were attacking all aspects of, of Christianity. But before John came, all the prophets and the law of Moses, they all looked forward to this present time that, that, that for a long time people were we're, we're looking for this one who is going to be come, and, and he, John, will be the culmination, who's the one who will prepare the way for the Messiah, the Messiah of the kingdom of God. Amen. A background, a bunch of background, hopefully it was helpful to you. Let's jump into this lesson. Amen. Sunday school lesson, John the Baptist appears, and we found in Luke chapter 3, verses 2b through 6 and verses 15 through 18. Again, well, this is the mission of John the Baptist will finally begin, right? And, then, and, and I'll begin here at verse 2b uh, through 3. And the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias. And the wilderness to share with you that, that he was leading this unassuming life. Again, that he had that, that not mo not much was known about him, which is known that he was in the wilderness with wild honey and locusts, and and he had these these crazy clothes on and all that, and that, that but but he was in this wilderness, and the word of the Lord came to John and saying, "It's time to do your work," and he, and he went into all the regions around Jordan and preaching this baptism of repentance. I'll share with you that in a second. This baptism of sin, repentance for the remissions of your sin. That's the message that John would be in this mission. This mission begins now here. We find here in our text. Amen. This baptism of repentance, Jews submitted themselves to baptism. 
This was a common ritual, this cleansing of the Gentiles when they, when you would be proselytized, you'd be converted into a, a, a Jew that, that, that you would seek that life, that you would be, that you would, you would do this baptism of repentance. That'd be your cleansing that'll, that'll, that would make you more, that no longer a Jewish and now, I mean, no longer a Gentile, but now converting to the Jews. But now John is preaching that Jews need to have the same baptism of repentance to change, to change your life, to be, the go from now they will be they will lead a life from from a from a, from sin into one that will be more connected with all mighty God making the way for the Messiah who will give them the forgiveness of their sins and the restoration of their relationship with the Creator. Amen. And and, and but when uh, when uh, he saw the many this is John's saw the many Pharisees and, and Sadducees, they were the religious leaders, that they would come and watch this man out know where he's doing as he goes to all this region, he was baptizing. And they, and they said to him, and he said to them, because they were watching him again, you know that these were all corrupt leaders, these uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, right in the Sanhedrin, they were all corrupt leaders, and they were watching him, and he's told them that you brood of snakes, you brood of sna vipers, right? Who warned you to flee from the coming of wrath? Produce fruit and keep with repentance. He's telling them that you need also to repent. That, that, that you need to produce real fruit, not just be self-aggrandizement, that you do stuff for your own benefit, that, that he's telling them that you too need this baptism of repentance as well. That's what John would say to those religious leaders. Amen. Let's move on. And Luke uh, chapter 3 verses 4 through 6. And as it was written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of the one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him, make straight paths for Jesus, clear the way, clear all of the debris from your life, clear it all out, for every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill made low, and every crooked road shall become straight, and rough ways made smooth, and all of mankind will see God's salvation. You might know this uh, passage of scripture that Dr. Martin Luther King used it in one of his speeches. And for the Message Bible it says that that is described in the words of Isaiah the prophet, thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. Again, I say, clear out the debris of your life. Every ditch will be filled. Every bump smooth out. Every detour is straightened out. All the ruts paved over. Everyone will, everyone will be there to see the parade of God's salvation. And ultimately, all will have to find their way to this Messiah. Says the clear out all the passageways but this you will find your way to him the prophesied one amen and, and, and luke uh, again they give me a commentary about this uh luke is six and four uh three four through six i'm sorry it comes from isaiah 40 in the text we learn from these verses that it shows us that john is the herald he was the one who would introduce her of the messiah he is that forerunner that prophesied forerunner from Malachi, he's the one after 400 years would now would come on the scene and it would herald and would declare exactly what John declares here of the Messiah, the prophesied one. He's here on earth and he declares the, the coming of the Messiah, the one that was foretold. And John, and he, John, will tell them, the Jews, to make their path straight to God. And the rough ways move, we need to get back right with almighty god that was the message of john the baptist this forerunner amen john's message was to the jews turn back to god and here's the thing that is the whole message of every prophet that would precede john as well turn back to god amen here we go uh, from our, le our, our, our lesson, John the Baptist appears on the scene, right? In verses 15 through 16 of our text. 
and now as the people were in expectation. And I share with you this image in the backdrop that wise men still seek him. I share with you before all of the prophets that would that were foretell of this Messiah, all those that obviously that Jesus could not could not perpetrate himself. He could not determine where he's going to be born. He could not tell that could not make it that he was born of a virgin. All these things were the prophecies would foretell about this. And and women and men were all expecting the wise women were, were seeking the, they were looking at the stars waiting for it. And women all thought that they might be that one who was prophesied would be the one who would bring that Messiah to earth. And all reason in their hearts about this John, you know, whether that he, John, was that Christ, that he maybe is that prophesied one. He is the one to restore them. He is going to be that king of the Jews. And John answered him saying, I, I indeed baptize you with water. Yes, I'm the baptizer. I am John the Baptist. Yet, yeah, But the one that's coming after me is mightier than I. Right? And, and, and that one that's coming after me whose sandal straps I'm not even worthy to even loose, that that's the one that you will be seeking. Not me. Wise men are still looking, but I'm not that one. I, the forerunner, the voice crying out in the wilderness, the one making way for him. Amen. And I preach saying, this is Mark uh, 1 and 7, and I preach saying, there cometh one mightier than, mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not even worried to stoop down and unloose. That I'm not even worthy of a slave to go down and, and unlatch his shoes that, that I'm, I'm not even, I can't even get that close to that one, that he's that regal, he's that mighty, he's that influential. I'm just one crying out in the wilderness, making the way, pointing you all to one who will come after me, who's mightier than I. Amen. We go on to verse 16 of our text. And he, that, my, that, 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 that prophesied Messiah, that Redeemer, that one that Isaiah would foretell, the one that, that Daniel, Ezekiel, and all the prophesy, all the Jeremiah, and all would foretell that that he, that Jesus, that, that Messiah, that Redeemer, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And John said the Messiah I'm speaking of is coming in with a, a different baptism. Not the baptism with water that I'm doing, but with fire. The, the Holy Spirit's outpouring. That He's that another comforter that, that, that Jesus says that when I'm, I'm going, but I'm going to send you another comforter, another Shekinah, another God with us, another Emmanuel, right? That, that, that Jesus would promise. And as part of the new covenant, this, this, this covenant that ended with Malachi, that now there's a new covenant with God's people. And we are promised an immersion in him, in, in this, in this, in this, uh, in Jesus. And an overflowing of the Holy Spirit. Now, that that other comfort, that other Messiah, that other Shekinah would come, and and he would the the God is no longer housed in houses made by man, but that Shekinah would now be in housed in the, in the in the hearts of believers, in the bodies of believers. And that baptism from Him will come with power, fire. That's what John would proclaim here in verse sixteen of our text. You know. And he says, and I share with you and reject this before the next text, that this is about this widowing uh, a fork, that it was a device used by a farmer to throw and, and mix the, uh, the shredded pile of grain and straw. And you would, would grow the grain and then now it's time for harvest. You grow the grain and straw into the air and let the wind carry away the, the, the straw and the chaff, the unusable parts, and the, the grain, the best part, would fall back to for collection on the on the floor, that's what we're sharing. I'm trying to share with you that interjecting so you'll help you understand the next first uh, text. Amen. That, that only the best material will be left over. It's your last verse of our printed text today. And, and he will. Speaking of Jesus, he's talking about this. John is for telling about this Messiah, this one that he is making the way for. That he says that, that he will, he will thoroughly clean out the threshing floor. That, 
that 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 he will take that winnowing fork and he would be the divider right that he would he would lift the 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 all of humanity in the in in the air and he will throw out uh he would throw it to the sky and the winds will blow and and he will clean out that threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn that would be heaven right and but the but the the chaff and 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 that and that uh and the straw, those unbelievers that, that, that he will burn with an unquenching fire. You know the fire, the lake of fire prophesied that I share with you many times in, in the book of Revelation with many other exhortations. And he preached this to the people. This was John's message. That this Messiah, this one that I'm talking about, the one who's come, I'm foretelling you about, he's the one that was prophesied. He's a redeemer. He's the one to bring us back into relationship with Almighty God. John's message was true. John's message was important. He was an important person because he would pour all humanity from that time up to our time as well. To point all people to John, I mean to Jesus. That was his word. That's why he was the most amazing and special person because he made the way. He pointed folks to the one. He said he was not the one he would live the life of obscurity knowing that after that 400 years and now it's time for this one prophesied in Genesis in 3 and 15 will come and now he's on the scene. This is John's message to us. And he, this Jesus, will be the divider. He will take the winnowing fork and ultimately he will divide those who believe and those who unbelieve and he will put those who believe into his barn and those who do not will be destroyed with the quenching, unquenchable fire. Amen. Let's move on to close out this lesson. Amen. John the Baptist appears. That's our lesson today. That he came on the scene. And he, and he gave this Jewish people and his community and it said he went from region to region preaching this repentance, right? And, and uh, he gave them a fresh word. And he says, it's Jesus is coming soon. And, and, and this Jesus, this prophesied one, he will divide the good folks and the bad folks on that day. That is his purpose. That will be the, the ending of his mission, that he will divide the good and the bad on that day. Will you be wheat or will you be the straw and the chaff? That's the message of the Bible as well. That's the message. Do you have a relationship with this Jesus? Or do you not? Are you wheat? Are you in the family of God? Are all you straw or chaff? Are you a follower of Satan and the principalities and powers and the rulers of this dark age? And will your family and your friends be wheat? Will they be believers? Or will they be chaff? Those will be cast into a lake of fire and to be burned. Everyone has to decide which one are you. And that is our Sunday School lesson this week. My prayer is something you've learned this week. Strengthen your faith as the Lord provides all your needs to learn something worthy of sharing. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we do pray and ask these things always in His name. We pray. Amen. Thanks so much for your time. Amen.